Hello, it's Justin here again with another update to the now named ZDCC uh, Digital Command and Control Interface uh, for Zero One. A um, couple of things that have happened. So uh, I've now made a uh, cardboard uh, prototype for the casing and as you'll see we've styled it to match the, uh, the rest of the system. Uh, of course this is just a mock-up. It's uh, not quite the right size and it's not quite the right colour and uh, it's just a sticker for a name at the minute um, but we will uh, eventually get some hard cases either made of resin or plastic or something similar uh, so we'll get onto that very soon um, you'll notice we've got the debug screen attached as well uh, probably won't make it into future releases in fact I'll probably take it off mine um, but it's useful for debugging just to see what's going on inside the DCC++ part of the system uh, important to note that the fantastic work done by the open source team at the DCC++ uh, group, uh, fantastic platform, open source, wonderful community, very helpful, uh, Google them, uh, go and have a look, very cheap, simple system to use, and uh, it's part of this configuration. Uh, but of course I've added a decoder to decode the uh, 01 components and a few other features uh, in the hardware that we'll talk about as we go. Um, so the other news is I've started a YouTube channel for all of this. So um, I've taken the name on of Zero One Guy. So if you're looking for me on YouTube, it's Z E R O, the number one guy, G U Y. Um, just search me and uh, and you'll find the channel and uh, this video, the previous videos, and uh, a whole lot more due to come probably today or tomorrow. Alright, so um, I'm going to break the videos up into various sections, otherwise they'll all get very long. Um, and so today will just be a quick overview uh, of the system and some of the philosophies that I've um, employed in, uh, in the programming features. Uh, before we get started, important to point out that um, the use of the ZDCC system doesn't require any change to the hardware of your Zero One at all. Uh, no internal changes, it just connects up to the power outputs of the master controller. Um, there's a minor change in the way you wire up the Micro Mimic, but that's all external, no changes internally. So you don't need to open any of your Zero One boxes to, uh, to make this work. You might need to fix your keypads and so forth, but that's got nothing to do with the DCC interface. The other key thing is once we've used this, once you implement the DCC system, all the tracks are now DCC. So if you have a zero one uh, module in your locos, you can't put it on the track anymore. You need to have a DCC module in your in your locos. If your accessories are connected to the track to get their signal, you have to disconnect them and wire them directly into the master controller. They will keep working, but they must be wired directly to the master controller. No zero one accessories or loco modules can be connected to the track or they will get damaged. All right. So, uh, as for the uh, the systems. So, uh, as you know, the output of the Zero One is pretty simple. It either controls the locos by identifying the loco number, speed and direction, or it controls a point or switch or turnout, whatever you like, I'll call them a point, um, by issuing the point number and the change, left or right. That's it. No other signals come out of the zero one. So we're pretty limited when it comes to programming. So what I've done is looked at the uh, zero one phases, uh, both the real, the potential, and the now, um, well, one would have said imaginary, but they're now real. Um, and I've used those as the basis for the new features. So uh, phase one, two, three, as you would expect, uh, but we've added some extras. So. The way I've done that is to use the phase number um, in the 90 series of accessories. So if you've got a point number 90, uh, it's no longer going to work because we've taken over accessory 90 on the zero one uh, for other things. So 90 through 99 is now no longer available for points, uh, but is available for additional features. Now, mind you, if you've got a uh, digital control system point um, accessory, um, then you can number it 100 to 199, probably even higher. Uh, so you won't lose out uh, on the DCC side, um, but Hornby 
uh, zero one, you'd need to stop your points at eighty nine. So let, let me show you what I mean. So over here on the debug screen, you'll notice that it says that the track power is off on the bottom line. Uh, so if we use uh, accessory 90, so there was no phase zero. So I've, uh, I've used zero as the whole idea of zero one and to turn it on. And so if we go for code 90 and write for on, You'll see the screen's changed and my Steam Loco has now fired up because the track power is on. And the left button for off. And you'll hear again the Steam Engine's uh, sound chip is turned off because there's no power to the track. Uh, so similar to the panic button, which in fact just returns uh, all the speeds to zero, it doesn't actually disconnect track power. Function 90 uh, will both turn power on and off to the track. Uh, so function 91 uh, is phase one and it's about loco control. Now of course loco control works straight out of the box with zero one so there's no news there. Um, however, uh, with zero one of course you needed to program your chips uh, in hardware. You needed to connect up the wires or paint the conductive paint on the modules. Well you don't do that in DCC, that's all done um, electronically. And in order to make the zero one useful, uh, function 91 allows you to program the DCC um, ID number onto your locomotive. Now it's quite a risky process because you're changing the programming of your DCC loco and the 01 of course does not provide you with feedback about the keys you've pressed. So it is a dangerous procedure but it works and that's function 91. I might make a separate video about that later um, I'll <laughs> need to think about the risk. Uh, phase two was about point control. And of course, point control works straight out of the box and you may not even need it if you're using zero ones uh, point modules, which I do. Um, so uh, it's reserved at the moment should we want to do any future work on uh, point control. Similarly, phase three, which was the micro mimic and the panel, you can see my panel or one of the, my panels sitting in the background there is a demo. Uh, phase three also reserved should we want to do something with uh, micro mimic uh, in the future. Phase four was supposedly about a light pen. Now I haven't done anything yet, but I have got some plans for how a light pen could in fact be uh, included uh, in the DCC uh, control system uh, working with the micro mimic panels. Uh, I need to do some more research, uh, but that's certainly a future option, uh, but there's no news on that yet. It's really just an idea. Phase five uh, was uh, alleged to be something about uh, programming routes uh, and having time sequences within the zero one system. Now, uh, I had been saying online that that was unlikely. You can do that through other means. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but in fact, I've made it work. Now, a couple of cautionary tales here. It's about timing and changing of points and timing and changes of speed and direction of locos. So it does depend very much on how well maintained your locos are and how clean your track is. So if anything happens, if a loco stalls or the track gets dirty and interferes with the contact, Anything that go that takes away from the normal operation of your layout um, will likely uh, give you dangerous results. Uh, however, um, phase five, function 95, does allow you to record the sequence of loco and point instructions and you can play them back. Uh, at this point, it won't show you any of those changes on the micro mimic uh, because that's outside of uh, the zero one, um, but uh, the DCC interface will record your zero one controls and play them back, which is fantastic news. Uh, not much for me to do here uh, because I haven't got any points set up on my main tracks at the moment. Okay, so then we start to get into the, the imaginary. So what would you do next if you had a zero one system? 
Well, a lot of issues, of course, around the 16 loco limit. So you can have 16 locos on 0, 01 and the DCC, um, IDs of 1 through 16, and DCC IDs of 1 through 16. That's how I programmed it, programmed it out the box. But with phase 6, or function 96, it allows you to, to change any of those 16 locos. So the 0, 01 will still know them as 1 to 16, but you can program 1 to be my steam engine number 639 on the DCC side, or my diesel, which is um, 560 as loco two. So phase six is about having more than 16 locos available. You can swap them in and out as you like by using function 96 to change the loco numbers assigned to 01 through 016. Phase seven, so if you wanted to take that further, what about swapping them in and out automatically? So phase seven is about schemes. So schemes of 16 locomotives that are stored on an SD card inside the uh, DCC uh, add-on box. Um, we've got that working. So you can have, uh, at this stage, up to 10 banks of 16. So that's 160 locos you can have programmed away and swap the 16 in and out. Uh, I've suggested you could have steam 16 versus diesel 16. Or you could have your 1920s locos 16 versus your 2020 locos 16. Um, you can configure them however you like. So that takes us to phase eight. So um, what would you do next if you were developing for zero one? Well, why not have a simple interface to operate the lights and the whistle uh, of your locomotives. So that's phase eight. Uh, so you can uh, turn on the lights, the headlight in particular, or any other main circuit light for forward direct and reverse direction. Um, turn on the lights and um, also sound the whistle, which takes us to function 99. So what would be the ultimate function? What would be phase nine? Well, uh, under DCC, of course, there are 28 separate functions you can control on your train. So in the ZDCC system, function 99 allows you to alter all 28 functions on your locomotive. Whatever the loco decoder is capable of, you'll be able to implement. So if you've got multiple sounds, you'll be able to do that. If you've got multiple lighting sequences, you'll be able to turn them on and off. So that's phase nine, uh, which is function 99. So that's the overview. Wow, that's a long video. That's the overview of the, um, the new ZDCC digital command and control interface uh, for the Zero One. Um, I'm interested in your feedback and I will be posting more videos demonstrating each of the individual functions over the next few days.